Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to Deb's Nails. What is world where we do soap opera reviews? The one we're going to be talking about today is the one that aired on Friday. I think it was June 9th, uh, I'm going to say. Not really sure, but it just is what it is. Okay, but it was Friday. Okay. Um, I was watching the episode. This is just my uh, sidebar prior to me getting into the soap opera for that day. Watch the whole soap opera, Lord have mercy, and they brought a blast from the past back into this uh, cast, okay? Woo! I'm here to tell you, when I saw the finished product of that particular episode, I'm like, okay, writers, it's all like popcorn. Don't know where you're going with this scenario, but I'm, hey, you got an ace running uh, actress when you hire her back to get back in these soap streets, okay? I'm talking about none other than Miss Sheila Carter, okay? <laughs> she wrecked havoc on The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, and hell, I think she was on General Hospital. But I'm thinking, what is going on with the writers? What are they trying to prove, Lord? What are they trying to say? They need more action-packedness, more um, Sheila Carter to be sitting there telling us about and this, that, and the third. I can't believe it. Because once I got there, I said, wow. Bringing back Sheila Carter. What are the writers thinking? This was my reaction. <laughs> when I saw it. All these takes on Sheila Carter back in full effect. She killed everybody, y'all. She killed everybody. So her and Quinn, <laughs> can you say, vicious vendetta, vengeance is theirs. I'm like, oh, Lord, what's going on? I can't take it. Who will be the villain? Who will be the victim? <laughs> I don't know. But Katie is definitely out of all of this scenario because with Sheila being crazy and Quinn being crazy, both of them are psychopaths, guys. Psychopaths. Can you hear me? Like I said, Sheila played on the boat and the beautiful. She was a, a, a wreck. I'm a train wreck ready to come come out and uh, just run you over, derail you. She was in Young and the Restless. Doing the same shit with uh, what's name? Lauren and Scotty. I could have sworn she was on General Hospital, but that's, that's predating me right there. But when I heard that and saw that, her face come across that screen. I was like, this particular photograph. <laughs> yes. I was like, that little visual I gave you, when I saw Sheila Carter talking about like a 007 thing when Quinn went over there to investigate and coming in somebody's house and not her, and she found out who Sheila Carter was. <laughs> I was like, okay, game over. Anyway, moving on into that episode for that particular day, we have Liam and Stephen. They're enjoying a moment together at Forrester Creations, talking over small bits and stuff. And she goes on to say she's having uh, lunch with her brother Thomas, but she needs Liam to come and escort her because he's not coming without his sidekick, which is none other than Sally. Okay, then Thomas brings over a stack of clothes on a rack for Sally Spectra to try on. Like, dang, you trying to thumb her down already? I thought you said you liked her artistic way of dressing and selling clothing in her apparel line. Because it is Sally Spectra. It ain't got Thomas' name on the marquee yet. So I kind of thought that was a little dig. Like he couldn't accept her for what she was, you know, trying to brand her over trying to put her in a better spotlight where she can really cater to the rich and famous. But that's not what she really wanted to cater to. She wanted to cater to um, today's women that can't afford a lot, but they want to look like they just stepped out on the red carpet. You know what I mean? So I don't know what uh, Thomas is really going with that theory, but we'll watch and see. Yes, we will watch and see. Then we have Quinn is surrounded around her family. She thinks Katie is the one that took a shot at her. Okay, Lieutenant Baker is over at Katie's house asking her some questions about the shooting at Quinn's Forrester's Creations house. I'm like, no, that's Stephanie Forrester. But we're not even going to go there, okay? Then we got small talk still going on with Liam about having lunch with Thomas and Sally. He's kind of confused, but yet enthused, okay? Then small talk is still going on with Sally and Thomas 
uh, about them choosing a correct outfit for her to come out and show her sister, hey, she's on another whole level. Things are going to be done different, this, that, and the third. Then we go where everyone is, uh, meaning Ridge and Quinn are telling Eric and Wyatt about Katie. Uh, pulled a gun on her at Forrester Creations when she so-called got the okay to fire Katie at the office, per Eric. Why is it so surprised? He said, that's totally out of Katie's demeanor. Are y'all sure she wanted to do this thing? Of course, you know, Ridge is right there, Quinn is right there, and Wyatt and Eric are looking like fools. Okay, then we got Lieutenant Baker asked Katie to come down town uh to the precinct for more questioning go to commercial come back we have small talk still going on with liam and Steffi. liam asks uh will he be able to um handle uh spectra fashions on the level that he wants to uh this is what liam is asking his wife Steffi about thomas actions um and she said yeah he's a great designer he's gonna turn it around over there but i didn't want him over there i want him back with the family and the family fold let her hang you know let her do what she got to do which is leave california but we know that's not gonna happen then we go to thomas likes the new outfit look on sally and somewhat she likes it too but we'll see she likes her flash and flamboyant style you can't erase that thomas don't even try Ooh, uh, her horns are going to come out soon then we got Eric. He's still surprised at Katie's disposition. He leaves Quinn to see what was Katie thinking and doing at the time. I mean, he's going to go confront her at the police station because that's what he says she had anyway. He tells Ridge and White to watch over Quinn. He'll only be gone for a short period of time. Um, and, you know, excuse me, Ridge tries to tell his dad to leave it alone. He's like, if you don't tell me what to do, I'm a man. I can go find out my own stuff, okay? Because I really need to talk to Katie. Like I said, don't seem like Katie. I don't know why Katie want to go to these type of extremes, why she want to kill you. I need my own answers. So he said, fall back. I'll be back. So then we have Katie still talking to Lieutenant Baker at the police station this time. She didn't kill nobody. This, that, and the third. She's still, you know, hoppering on that, trying to make it very well known. She has nothing to hide. Whatever. We'll go to commercial combat. All four individuals are coupled up at El Dugino. Um, all of them are at the restaurant, getting to know each other once again, dining together, you know. Then we got Liam is pleased to see Thomas. He stands up, shakes his hand, say, hey, long time, no see, you know. Very, very cordial. Then Stephanie noticed that Sally has definitely upped her game and changed outfits to more lucrative luxury type of uh, fashion. And she noticed it, okay, in her own special way. Then we have... Um, uh, the lieutenant is asking Katie to submit to a shot residue testing, uh, and she, of course, says she will do. And so the uh, tech comes in, lab tech comes in and swab her clothing and her hands and this, that, and that third. And, you know, Katie's acting all fidgety and nervous and her eyes, anxiety is on 10. Okay, then Katie's still telling the uh, Lieutenant Baker, she didn't do this, but she'll go on and submit to all this, but this is just crazy. Y'all need to be really looking for the real shooter, which is Sheila Carter, as we come to find out. <laughs> oh, Sheila trying to get a hold to uh, Quinn. Oh, she got her match now. She didn't have a match. She got her match now. Then we got Wyatt is trying to wrap his head around Katie being the shooter. And Quinn, he don't believe it. He asked Ridge to show him pinpoint where the gunshot penetrated from or what I. So Quinn was, you know, where she was being shot at. So they both leave. Then Quinn to herself. Quinn on here some binoculars behind a sofa cushion or pillow. And she goes to look out her window towards Katie's house. And she finds somebody walking around who seems to have the same makeup or build as Katie. And she's talking to herself like, Katie, why you ain't at the jailhouse? Why you ain't at the, the precinct getting questioned or booked or something? So she's kind of like on edge. So we're going to commercial come back. We have small talk going on. Uh, at the restaurant where Stephanie and Liam, Thomas, and Sally are um, talking together. Stephanie is still throwing shade at Sally. And Sally still is apologizing to uh, Stephanie for all her wrongdoings. So, okay. Then we have Wyatt tells Rich that was inches from his mom. Are you serious? Then Rich shows some concern like, yeah, I know, right? But he ain't getting down to the nitty gritty to really go and tell the backstory of it all. Okay. Of why Katie actually pulled that trigger on her in the first place. All the lies both him and his mother have told and gotten themselves into. Okay, that's why they didn't get married, meaning Brooke and Ridge. But they didn't want that secret to come out. But they want to put J uh, Katie in jail for attempting uh, the thought of her trying to shoot Quinn. <laughs> 
like, oh, my Lord. And poor Papa Bell, he going down now. No, he finna get his feelings hurt sooner rather than later. Then we got uh, Baker and Lieutenant Baker and Katie still talking when Eric shows up at the precinct and he wants to talk to Katie alone. Uh, what's his name? Lieutenant Baker has some reservations, but Katie just go on and silence all of them saying, hey, whatever you got to say, Eric, you said in front of Lieutenant Baker. I don't have nothing to hide. Then Eric goes on to talk to Katie in front of L Lieutenant Baker and, and, you know, about, are you, you know, he's asking her, did you try to shoot my wife? Did you scare my wife? Did you pull a gun on my wife? I'm like, damn, Eric, can you, you know, you asking 21 questions at one time. Can the girl get something out? So Katie tries to explain herself to Eric. Eric is making it very difficult for Katie to explain. <laughs> and then we have Quinn comes over to see why Katie isn't in jail. I'm like, super snoop. Okay, they used to be super snoop Katie's job. Not you, Quinn. You always gonna do what you got to do and, um, what do you call it? Erase all your evidence so people can't catch back up with you. But now you're being super snoop going over there unannounced in Katie's house. And who go leave all their doors unlocked? Who do that these days? Anyway, she gets in the house. She don't go around the house to look around for Katie. She calls out to Katie, but Katie's not there. And she's like, now I know I just saw somebody over him. So she goes and looks through Katie's little telescope. And as she's peering down to, you know, peek through she hears a little crack, you know, like you were hearing a haunted movie story. Like, I don't want to turn around because what I'm going to see, I ain't going to want to know. <laughs> I'm about to fly this window because I know I'm not going to be able to go back the way I came in. So she, you know, gently turns around and she finds this lady's um, bill that seems like it looked like Katie. But she noticed that that's not really Katie. And she asks the lady who she is. And lo and behold, Sheila turns around and she goes and say, Sheila, <laughs> I want. I will wait for her to say, uh, Bond, Sheila, Bond. <laughs> Cause they playing a little double O cell music and all that stuff. Oh Lord, I tell you the truth, it's a hot mess. It was a hot mess, but I was like, Lord, where are the writers going with bringing Sheila Carter back in this scenario? Where are they going with this, and why? Then I was trying to think about, okay, did her and Eric were married or, or tried to get married? Sometime back in the day, I don't know, for my vintage season, uh, Young and the I mean, um, Bold and the Beautiful, um, not uh, viewers, can y'all tell me, do we have a story, a bad story that I've forgotten about happening with Sheila and Eric, possibly? <laughs> but anyway, we will see how all of this turns out. I want to say kudos to the writers, but I don't really know where they're going with this she Sheila scenario because technically she was supposed to been dead a long time ago. It's like she done traveled through all three soap operas, the bold and the beautiful, the young and the restless, and general hospital. And she still can't find a home, y'all. But I'm like, hey, she got to be being paid some new law to be going through all three of them and still stay relevant after all this time, okay? She done got nine, more than nine lives now, okay? But anyway, y'all, that was my retake, my review on The Bold and the Beautiful that aired on, like I said, I think it was the 9th. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it was the 9th of June episode. Okay, y'all take care, and I'll talk to you real soon for more soap opera reviews. Bye-bye.